Greetings and welcome to Smartwatch Ticks. Today we're going to take a look at two really similar but quite different watches. The number one D5 Plus and the new number one D7. So why am I showing you a Kingwear KW98? Um, well, because I can. <laughs> I'm so mean. This is still not available. Just an update. We have heard it's a couple of more months probably before you'll get your hands on this one. But I'm really here to show uh, something interesting that's been discovered about the clock skin engines inside these watches. So we're demoing this brand new watch face. It's a modification of one that's been out there but hard to find. We finally got it and Alrod has modified it and updated it for English. It wasn't in English before. Now it is. But I want you to pay special attention to the rotating dots and the sweep hands. Right? Boom. You notice that all three of these are going clockwise and that one's going counterclockwise. This is on a KW88 class of watch. This is the KW98. There's the IQI i4. There's a whole bunch of them. Supposedly the Z Blaze Thor when we get it here eventually to review, um, all run the same watch face engine. And this watch face, which is now uh, on Alrod's um, G Plus community, I'll have a link in the show notes for you. You can go over and pull this off of there. That's uh, going to run just fine on all of these particular watches, okay, that are of the KW88 class. The other class of watches are the number one and final watches. And of course, this video is about the number one D5 Plus and the number one D7. So here you go. Here's a different version of that watch face. It looks similar, but it's actually different running on both of these watches. Now, it had to be modified so that it would do the same thing. You see here the uh, sweep hand and the dots are running to the right, and this little thing is rotating to the left. Sorry, I'm getting reflections on this one. However, if you notice on the D7, everything is going clockwise. Now, it's the same number one company watch. And this is the first deviation we've seen that I know of in the watch face uh, engines because it's exactly the same clock skin that's running on both of these using the internal engines and it's being represented differently. I'm pointing that out because um, it may be that you're going to start seeing watch faces that you were used to working one way are not going to work the way you expected, particularly on the D7. And there's our first difference between the D7 and the D5 Plus. is a slightly different watch face engine. Now, what happens if you take the... Stay. If, stay. If you take the uh, version of the watch face... Uh, that is running on the KW88 class, and you actually put it on the number one, well, watch this. I'm going to press and hold, and I'm going to come over here. Now, this is the same clock skin that's running on this one. And this is why Alrod has having to go back and redesign and modify some of them that otherwise you think all you needed to do was just duplicate one file and uh, copy it, uh, you know, like we talked about in another video, and everything that ran on this would run on this. Not so. And you get into the details of the rotation code. You notice, of course, the date and time are totally different, and you can see the English down here, um, and the colors are slightly different for each of the months and so forth. Anyway, um, you can see that the rotation is uh, completely different for the sweep hands and the dots between the two. So we actually have three different things going on. Can you see that? Three different rotational aspects going on in two different watch face designs. So from now on, you may be seeing when you download a watch face that you're actually going to need to install the version that is for your particular watch, much more so than in the past. And that's the whole lecture on watch faces. So what we're here to do is actually talk about these two. 
because they're really, really similar. You notice the watch faces are the same size as compared with this larger watch face here. I'm not going to get into all the technical mumbo jumbo about millimeters and that, but I do want to tell you, and you find all that in the specs for these, that um, these two are really similar. And that's why there's a lot of interest in whether you, you want to pick up the D5 Plus or you want to pick up the uh, D7. The D5 Plus has an AMOLED screen. Now watch it when we turn them both sideways. You see any kind of difference? I don't. But it's an AMOLED screen. I don't think the uh, D7 is, uh, is that quality of a screen, but I'm not seeing a lot of fade out or color change or anything like that. And again, I'm really sorry for the reflections. But there you go. Um, so they both look really solid at angles. They're good and bright, and they're showing lots of vivid colors. Uh, what else can I tell you? They're totally different in pixels. This has 400 by 400 pixels. This is 240 by 240. And I'm having more of a trouble getting the camera to focus than for you to pick out the actual pixels. So I, uh, I'm leaning to, there's no difference in the screens effectively when you're actually looking at these things. Let's see if I go into, just show you the apps and what, the look layout looks like. Of course, they're different, but we're just looking at screen quality and clarity at this point. And that's one of the biggest differences between the two watches is the type of screen. So my call on this is they're pretty much identical. So if you can live with a 240 by 240 and your eyes aren't super sharp to see a change in detail, uh, even the tiny writing, it's not all that tiny, but it's coming through fine. So the 400 by 400 AMOLED screen energy consumption is much higher than this lower resolution screen. So you get better battery life, supposedly, on this one. Now, inside, this one has a bigger battery than this one does as well. So, ideally, you would think you're going to get longer battery life with the new one. See how it's a little bit thicker than you would with the D5+. Plus. So what is it really like in real life? Nobody knows. Everybody uses them differently. I keep getting asked, how long does the battery last? I've got good detailed report on this one. If you look at the show notes under the D7 review, I've kept track of running it two times all the way from full to empty and how long it takes to charge. Bottom line, I get about three days of very little use just checking time on this one and having it come on and off after 15 seconds, for example. This one, I don't know. Um, I have so many watches, I can't wear them all and put them all through different testing. It just doesn't work that way. So on one of the videos we've done about battery life and how to extend it, I've asked users to report their results on what kind of battery life they get on their particular watch. You might check there. But as far as what happens if you have GPS on, Wi-Fi, but not cellular, you don't use a SIM card. All right, what if you do use a SIM card, but you don't use Wi-Fi, but you, you don't use the GPS unless you're out running or walking, and then you turn it off religiously afterwards. How long do they last? I don't know. Generally, I could say this is probably going to give you a day, a good working day. If you take it to work in the morning, if your commute's not too long, and let's say 7, 8, 9, 10, somewhere in that range of hours. If you're getting more than 10 hours, that's great. If you use it lightly, not uh, watching movies or something, you can probably get <clears throat> 10 hours, I'm guessing, 6 to 10 hours. This one, well, I'm guessing, guessing now, it's just a guess, you're getting 12 to 15 hours. Okay, so if battery issue, an inability to charge your watch, and your watch is going to die in the middle of the day and be useless to you, go with this one, because you're going to get longer battery life, period. I can't tell you how much each will get, but I will tell you that this one will get more than this one will, doing the same things. Okay, that's another big difference. What's the same? The bands are pretty much the same. They're non-removable leather bands using the same clasps, same bands, everything the same there. Underneath, 
We have a metal back on the D5 Plus. It's more expensive. You're going to find that this one's pricier with the 400 by 400 screen and the pretty silver back. Um, it's got the three uh, unit heart rate sensor, the two diodes and the receiver. I think they call that second generation. This one just has two. So it's a little lower level heart rate monitor. Uh, is this one more accurate than that one? I don't know. Um, this one, in order to put a SIM in, wow, I never even took the plastic off the back of that. Look at that, it's still there. Um, you have to take all the screws out, you have to open the back, and that's where you get in to put a SIM card. There's no expandable memory in here, nor is there in this one, um, just a SIM card. To pop in a SIM card here, look, it's really easy. You lift that thing up with your finger, no screws needed, pop in a SIM. So if you're one of those folks that wants to take your AT&T or T-Mobile in the USA SIM card along with you, uh, well, basically take your phone with you. Um, no, you want to leave your phone at home, right? Well, take your SIM with you. You take the SIM out of your phone, if it's pretty easy to do. And on this one, the D7, you just pop that open, put your SIM in here. If it's a nano SIM, if it's a micro SIM, you get, an, an, get it converted to a nano SIM at your phone store and then get in a little adapter. So when you put it in your phone, you can you use the adapter to adapt it to your phone. Easy to do. Um, anyway, you take the SIM out of your phone, you put it in your watch, and you go out and you can use your watch as if it were your phone. Mm, sort of. Data, I don't know. Um, 3G data is all that's supported. Uh, and even lightly at that, but at least for making phone calls and text messages, if you wanted to stay in contact with your one SIM and your one phone number, this watch lets you do it. This watch is much more of a challenge. It's a dedicated SIM you're going to want to put in here. Charging. This is a big one. Again, depending on the, uh, the life. You know, it's a shame it's not backwards because these little cables are really easy to come by and the D7, the one that lasts a long time, uh, uses this quick little snap and hold uh, charger. And it's the same thing you find on many of these other watches. If you find on the bottom, it's got these big round gold spots that are the same distance apart then they use the same charging cable. And you can get one from Kingwear or IQI or Number One or Finow or anywhere that uses this technology. These are easy to come by. So you could have one in the car, one at home, one at work, one in your back pocket with your phone. You know, you could have a charging cable anywhere and makes it real easy to plug in and charge this thing up. Even if you just get a boost charge of 15 minutes, that's great. Except you don't need it on this one because it's got that huge battery and small energy saving screen. So this one's going to give you 12 hours uh, anyway, but it's going to be easy to get another charger for it wherever you want. Long life on this one and many ways of making sure you're going to last through the day. <clears throat> well, how easy do you think it is to get this? Yeah. First of all, these little pins sometimes give us problems. They're all nice and level on this one. Every now and then you find one that's a, a push down a little bit, especially these middle ones. Those are the data pins. The outer ones are the power pins. And if they don't make proper contact, now it's worse on some of the other watches uh, that are um, out there, but this has been improved over time. But nonetheless, it's one of these dock things. And it's special. You can't use the X5 or the, um, the X3 or... Um, you could use an X1, I think, which is the same as a D5. Anyway, the cutout, you see, matches the button. So this is a one-button watch. It snaps on here. It holds with a magnet. Pretty solid. But it's a really, it's a big dock thing. And you got to have this big dock thing. And then you plug in just a basic USB cable on the side, upside down. I consider that upside down. And... Uh, there's how you charge. Now imagine slipping that in your back pocket with your phone, huh? Much more cumbersome. And getting another one of these is really a challenge if you want to have one at work, just to make sure you can boost it up. And they're curved, so there's no way you're going to use anything but the dock. Okay, 
So you really got to plan on uh, having the ability to charge your watch regularly. No more than five hours, I would say, away from uh, charging if you're going to use this somewhat heavily, you know, read news on it, do emails on it, definitely use the SIM card, make phone calls, those kind of things. And you need to have the dock. So you got to take your one dock with you everywhere. And the more you use it, the more susceptible the pins can be. You, you see how I'm kind of leaning away from this one as far as a workhorse uh, watch? It's a great watch. It's a uh, good sound. I think this one's got pretty good sound, too. The speakers on this one are on the side. No, no, no. Where are the speakers? Oh, there it is. It's underneath the strap there. Okay, and, and this same here. So you have the sound coming out there. They're, they're both pretty good in sound. Not great, but pretty good. Um, but you've got a charging issue uh, and a battery issue somewhat with this one. And uh, keep the screen down in brightness on both of these as low as you can, uh, and it'll last longer. Okay, what haven't I talked about? We did Antutu uh, benchmark tests are in the reviews. Um, cellular capabilities, um, we've done a little bit of testing on those. Uh, we need to make sure, of course, that the versions that you get support at least um, 3G because the 2G network in the U.S. anyway uh, shut down at the end of January, um, at the end of December of 2016. So any watches that use the 2G network uh, won't run. You won't be able to use them in these watches. So check the specs. In the U.S., you're looking for 1,900 megahertz and 850 megahertz, I'm pretty sure. And um, you need to see that in the 3G uh, area for it to be capable of working as a phone and for getting data. In other parts of the world, like Canada and, of course, China, 2100 megahertz is the, is the thing. And all these watches support, of course, the China, uh, the, the China frequencies. Uh, we have about the same length of straps and same number of holes, so you're not going to be able to put it on smaller or bigger arms than this. And this is what they look like on. Oops. Here is the D7. And this is the D7 in black. Um, duh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's it. You know, with the black, the bezel just kind of has a little bit of a, like a bright coal reflective capability. Thickness, it looks like that. Not much else I can do to show you that one. All right, let's switch over to the other one. Have you made up your mind yet? Are you getting closer? For ladies, this what you're looking at, these two watches are pretty much your options. Most of the other Android 5.1 type watches have really bigger screens. So the only two like this that have these small screens, you're looking at them. Final makes a version that's uh, called the X3, which is like this, but instead of one button, it has two little recessed buttons on the side. So it can actually... The black one in particular can look a little bit thinner. So if you're thinking of a D5+, Plus, you might also look and compare with the Final X3+. Plus. Okay? Uh, and it is a smaller watch than this one or the other ones that are also in this 1.39-inch class of watches. See how that's a bit bigger? All right. We have buying links, of course. We have buying links. It's our sponsors that send us these watches. They're uh, listed down below. The uh, X5 Plus came to us from Gearbest, and the D5, D7 came to us from Geek Buying. And I'm going to have buying links for both of these in the show notes. They give us discount coupons when they can, um, so you should be able to pick them up at a, at a good price. And any more questions? Good. I'm glad we finally answered everything you wanted to know about which you should choose. The number one D7 
for the number one D5+. plus. But wait, there's more! They come in silver as well! Here's the D7 in silver with a brown band that pops on your wrist and looks like this. And here's the D5 Plus in its silver version. Again, metal back. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention, but the D5 Plus is running Android 5.1 and the D7 is running uh, Android 4.4. That's another one of those attempts at energy savings. And it's also, this has a quad-core processor, and the D7 has a dual-core processor. Everything you wanted to know, eh? Everything. Okay, then. You've been watching Smartwatch Ticks. Thanks for your pers your prescription, yes. <laughs> and um, Alrod has got this watch face now, created, finished, and tested, and is available on uh, his uh, G Plus community. And I have a link for that in the show notes as well. All right, we'll see you again soon.